God bless you and welcome. My name is Ednera Santiago. I, along with my husband, am the director of the Young Married Couples Ministry. And here with me is Sister Christine Avila, and she's the director of the Women's Ministry here at Good Shepherd Ministries. And so we just want to welcome you all today. We thank you for spending time with us. And we just want to get right into a word that the Lord has placed in our hearts. If you viewed our last reflection, it had to do a lot with worry and anxiety and depression. And so we just want to dive a little bit deeper into that word, that theme. Uh, but before we get started, we're going to go ahead and say a prayer. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this moment that you have granted us, Lord, for this time where we can just come together as women, come together as sisters in Christ, Lord, and just dedicate this time to you. I pray, Father, that you will prepare our hearts so that we may receive what you have in store for us, Lord, that you may minister to us according to our need, Lord. Let your will be done. I pray, Lord, for the marriages. I pray, Lord, for the children, for each individual who is tuning in today, Father God. Take control. Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to get started by um, reading Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 and 27. And it says, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Verse 27 goes on to say, can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And this was Jesus speaking in this scripture. And we all know that it's important to be concerned about our well-being, about food, about having clothing, a roof over our head. But it's the anxiety piece that we want to focus on. And particularly verse 27, where it says, can all your worries add a single moment to your life? So what is anxiety? Last week we talked about um, worry, the definition of worry, and how it means the split, splitting of the mind. And so anxiety, um, simply put, is a feeling of worry, nervousness, and unease over an impending or anticipated ill. So you're expecting something to happen. And whether or not it does happen is probably irrelevant because in that moment, in your mind, it's happening and it's affecting you. It's a feeling of anguish over a situation. It is also a defense mechanism that can be helpful when you find yourself in a dangerous situation. Anxiety can trigger the fight or flight response needed to get out of some dangerous situation. So it's a feeling and it's not necessarily wrong. Um, we do know that there are several forms of anxiety, but when it invades our lives, um, when it debilitates us, when it prevents us from doing our day to day, that's when it becomes a problem and that's what we wanna focus on today. We know that anxiety can be spiritual torment. There are many times where you may feel oppressed um, or attacked by the enemy because he studies us and he knows those buttons that he can push that are really he just does. gonna work us up. And so that can be a form of anxiety. And we also know that it can be physiological or psychological where um, our bodies, they, they produce chemicals and, and everybody is different. We are wonderfully made, but everybody is different. And so I may produce more of certain hormones or more than certain uh, chemicals than my sister Christine and my body may respond with a higher level of anxiety. And there's also environmental. It depends on what you have been exposed to, how you grew up, how you were raised. Were you exposed to domestic violence? Were you exposed to many factors that can contribute to higher levels of anxiety? And so now we just want to move into what does the Bible say um, about anxiety and just touch on that. Matthew 6, 25 and 27, which we read in the beginning, it teaches us that stressing about things going on around us is not going to add a single day to our lives. Yeah. But furthermore, it robs us. It robs us of time. So not only does it not add time to our lives, but it takes away. It takes away from the time that you can be spending with a loved one or time that you can be spending enjoying something relaxing or something fun. And it's important to know that there are physical effects on our bodies too. Um, 
that may sound all too familiar to you. I'm going to list some, and you may be surprised that even today you may have been experiencing some of these um, feelings. So anxiety can lead to headaches, breathing problems, stomach problems, heart palpitations, extreme fatigue, increase in blood pressure, body aches, chest pain. Furthermore, anxiety is more common in women. The American Psychological Association conducted a study back in 2001 and 2002, and they surveyed 43,093 people. Wow. Of that group, about half was composed of women, and it showed that among other things, 29% um, of women experienced serious depression among that group compared to only 18% of men. And it showed in that study that it's more prevalent, it's more common in women. And it's believed to be because women tend to ruminate more. They tend to dwell more on certain thoughts than men. I don't know if you can relate to that, but when I read that, I completely believed it because I live that every day. If I'm not careful, my mind will go places where it should not be. And so it's our job to keep our minds focused on the word of God, to keep our mind focused on the promises of God. Amen. Back in 2011, I had a serious problem with anxiety, and it got to the point where I really, really thought that I may have a heart condition. And if you don't know this, the symptoms of anxiety can mirror symptoms of a heart attack or a heart condition. And so I was very, very concerned, and um, it's so important to call it out for what it is. And so if you're unsure and you're feeling symptoms and you're feeling the tightness of the chest um, and, and things like that, it's very important that that you really check it out and find out what it is. And so in my situation, um, you know, after several exams, after ultrasounds, after heart monitoring, um, my doctor informed me that it was actually anxiety. And in my situation, it was caused by an experience, caused by a situation. My mom had passed away the year before. And when she passed away, only eight months before that, my best friend had passed away in a car accident. And so I was dealing with so much grief that I couldn't handle it. My heart, I, I, I don't know if you know or if you have experienced the loss of someone very dear to you, very close to you, but it physically hurts. It hurts your chest. It hurts your heart. It physically is a feeling that is painful. And so... Um, Knowing what it was, knowing that it was anxiety, I was able to do something about it. And I love the verse that Sister Christine shared um, during the last reflection in Philippians, um, where it says that you will experience, if you call on the Lord, you will experience peace that surpasses all understanding. And I share this testimony with many people because it's something that is my experience with the Lord. It's what I have been through. Um, I've shared it with the young women, with the youth, with the young married couples. But there was a time when, like I mentioned before, I was just feeling so anxious. And I remember that it was just so painful one night that I called out to the Lord. And I reminded him, I said, Lord, you promised me. You promised me that if I called on you, that you would answer. And that you would show me things that I don't know, things I don't understand, things that I can't even imagine. You promised me that you would give me peace that surpasses my understanding. And right now, I just need that peace. Right now, I need you to deposit just an extra dose of that peace and that joy. Because I can't go on. This is just unbearable. And it was like the flip of a switch. All of a sudden, I was just inundated by God's peace. And... I was shocked for a moment because I just, you know, I'm looking around in my room and I'm like, one minute, one second, I'm there crying and, and just, you know, doing the ugly cry, you know. <laughs> and then the next minute, it's like, it's gone. It's like, Lord, you really did it. It's amazing. And if you haven't lived that, you may not understand, but I just want you to know that it is possible that when you claim those promises over your life, God will come through. And he has healed my heart in that way. Does that mean that anxiety won't come knocking on my door? Absolutely not. Anxiety will always try to creep in and will always try to take over. And so it's very important that we're aware 
and that we're actively doing something on a regular basis, on a regular basis to prevent it from taking over. So, so Christine, I don't know if you have any experience that you would like to share pertaining to anxiety and how you have managed and what has helped you. Amen, yes. Um, I will be completely honest. Um, anxiety is something that I, I have actually struggled with for um, a greater part of my life. Um, anxiety um, has not, on the door of, of my heart and my mind many, many times. Um, just a few years ago, probably about three or four years ago, I, I would experience um, panic attacks and it would attack my breathing and I thought that I would was choking and I couldn't breathe, that I was gonna die. You know, you just get all these overwhelming feelings and emotions that you think that they're gonna literally overtake you, that you don't have control over. And I went and I reached out to a doctor. I uh, reached out to a psychologist, a psychiatrist. And, you know, there were things in, in my childhood that I had never confronted. And they had been festering in my life and, and in my heart for most of my adult years, um, it, all throughout my adolescence and, and young adulthood and, and even um, as an adult and, and a wife and a mother. And, you know, I spoke to that doctor and, you know, said I had anxiety. I was experiencing depression, um, severe anxiety to the point where um, I was prescribed several um, medications to try and have it under control. And um, I did begin to take that medication. Um, of course, you know, I, I always knew that the Lord can make a way that he, I knew that he had the power to um, heal my heart, to um, help me to get over that struggle and, and, and just forgive and, and um, just mend that part of my life. Um, and I got to the point where I just got sick and tired of being sick and tired. I got sick and tired of feeling anxious and worried. And um, I just said, you know what? God, I don't wanna be subject to taking medication for the rest of my life. I want to be able to function as a whole woman emotionally, mentally, physically. I want to be the mom that my children need. I want to be the wife to my husband that he needs. I want to be your servant uh, that you want me to be and that you called me to be. And I got to the point where I was so fed up and I said, you know what, God? I give up. I surrender completely to you. And I said, you know what? And I, and I did not consult with my doctor on this, but I just said, you know what? No more medication. I'm done. And you know what? Till this day, never once again, I saw that doctor. Never once again, I took another pill. Because the moment that I surrendered my life completely in that area to the Lord was when I began to see the hand of God move in my life, in my children, in my marriage, like I had never experienced so I encourage you to surrender it all to Jesus. He is the perfect medicine. He is the way maker. He is the one that will give you the peace that you need to overcome whatever storm you are facing in your life. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing your personal Amen. experience. And we are by no means discrediting medication yes. or how it can assist because we do know that there are some instances where um, it's, it's very helpful and it's necessary. But this was her testimony and how she called out to the Lord and how he responded. And as women, we have to keep in mind that we are natural caretakers. No matter what setting you put us in, we're going to try to take over and we're going to try to care for something or someone, whether it's a plant or whether it's a group of people, we're gonna to try to take care um, of someone. And many of us are working full time because we live in these times where it's not like the good old days where mom stood home and mom, you know, um, by the time you got home, everything was done and, and those were the, the good days, right? Yeah. Um, but we don't live in those times anymore. And so many of us are working full time and for those of us who have kids, we're still taking care of them. Um, some of us are still phasing into our regular work schedules. So we're still working from home. We're still homeschooling up until school ends soon, I hope. Um, and, and, you know, we're, for those of us who are married, we're taking care of our husbands. For those who live on our own, taking care of um, our homes. And so it's an adjustment. Every day 
is an adjustment. Every day we may have a plan in motion, but something will come, something will happen, and it will throw us off of our tracks. What do we do when those things happen? We can't let anxiety creep in. We can't let it take over. So remember that anxiety is a feeling, and there's always going to be times when we experience it. But the important thing is not to let it take over. I would like to read out of 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. And it says, so humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. And at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Verse 7 says, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Pastor was preaching on this recently, and I was just shaken by it because I had already written my outline. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Um, I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to feel. But I thank the Lord for providing me with that peace of mind and that confirmation that what he was giving me, um, it was for a purpose. And it was for a time such as this. And through verse 6, we can see that we need to humble ourselves. Do you know that when you allow worry and anxiety to lead you to take matters into your own hands, that that can be a form of pride? I never looked at it that way. But in studying this, I realized that although maybe we're not intending to, by relying on our own strength, we're saying, thank you, Lord, but no thanks. I got this one. You're taking a little bit too long. I think I can handle it on my own. The dangers of that are just so incredible. We need to humble ourselves in prayer. We need to rely on the promises found in the word of God, like I was mentioning earlier, just reciting and, and just saying it out loud. We need to replace those anxiety-provoking thoughts with the word of God. Amen? And so even if it's two verses that you take away with you today, let it be, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares for you. And let it be, can all your worries at a single moment of your life. Whenever you're facing a situation, if you just say those two things, can my worry at this moment, at this instant, for this situation, can it add a moment to my life? Can it add the solution? Can it take me out of the situation I'm, pres I'm presently in? That will put things into perspective for you, and you will be able to shift your focus onto the Lord, shift your focus onto the Word of God. Though we'll be going deeper into this topic over the next few weeks, I just want to encourage you to take steps as often as you can to reduce the stress that you feel, whatever that may look like. And we talked a little bit about that. We talked about praying and just filling your mind with the Word of God to combat those thoughts that may lead to anxiety, but also finding something that relaxes you, a new hobby, a self-care routine, just making it part of your everyday life. And for me, that's different. I'm a night owl, so I like putting the kids to bed and then having that two to three hour afterwards to just do whatever makes me feel good. That may look different every night. One night, it may be nothing but worship and, and prayer. One night, it may be um, folding the clothes that have been lingering in the basket for the last two days. Whatever it is in that moment that makes me feel good, that makes me feel rejuvenated, that's what I do. And so I encourage you to find something that gives you peace. It, it doesn't have to be a day at the spa. It can just be something that brings you peace at home that you can do each and every day just to feel renewed. We want to thank you so much for spending some time with us. We want to thank you for tuning in. And if you have any prayer requests or if you have any praise reports, like Sister Christine mentioned in her last reflection, I thought that was a great idea. Please share them with us. You never know who you're going to encourage. God bless you. God keep you. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Join the conversation and leave a comment below. To hear more messages, make sure to subscribe. If you would like to learn more about Good Shepherd Ministries, visit us on Facebook or check out our GSM website. Thank you, and as always, God bless.